So, when the sixth patriarch received, uh, arrived at Caohu village of Saozhou, nobody knew about it. Only a person, a Confucian scholar, so the scholar who studied Confucius teaching, named Liu Zilue, gave him a warm welcome, treated him well. And he had an aunt who was ordained as a Buddhist nun, and her Dharma name is Wu Jinchang. Wu Jinchang is also very was also very wise. She often recited the Mahaparinirvana Sutra. I've said this before that Mahaparinirvana Sutra. So the Parinirvana Sutra is the summary or the short version of the Mahaparinirvana Sutra. It's like the Diamond Sutra is a shorter version of the Maha uh, Parinirvana Sutra, and the Heart Sutra is even the shorter version of the Diamond Sutra. So Mahaparinirvana Sutra is a very long sutra of the Tripitaka. And the Master, upon hearing her reciting the sutra, instantly comprehended the profound meaning of the Mahaparinirvana Sutra. And so upon hearing it, he comprehended it. He understood the profound meaning. So he explained it to this Buddhist nun, Wu Jintang. And this nun asked him about the words of the sutra. And then the patriarch said, I cannot read the written words. But I know the ultimate truth, the ultimate meaning of it. And the nun did not believe it. And if you can't read, how can you understand the meanings? And then the sixth patriarch said, So all the wonderful truths, the fun wonderful concepts of the Buddhas are irrelevant to the written language. So I want to explain this statement clearly. So if you don't recognize the words, how can you understand the meanings? But the Sixth Patriarch replied that all the wonderful truths of the Buddhas are irrelevant to the written language and not related to the words. You need to understand this because from kindergarten to the elementary schools, junior schools, high school, college, to the PhDs, all that we studied are written language, are words. So without studying, how can you understand? But I'm telling you that's not the case here because the real ultimate truth, the Buddha's teaching, are not related to the written language. But in order to know about the Buddha's teaching, you need to read, you need to study, you need to read the sutras. And after reading the sutras, with the guidance, the pointing of the 
good dharma friends or a good teacher, then you understand the ultimate truth that this is the wonderful Buddha's truth. And the truths are not related to the written language. Ultimately, it's not related. So the complete understanding of the mind, enlightenment, are not related to the written language. I ask you to write a note because I want to see the profound meaning behind the written words. It's not that you need to write from beginning to end. Ever since the ancient time till now, or to birth till now, and all your experience and background, that's not the case. It's just a few words, because with these few words, there is profound meaning behind it. There is no need for a lot of words because it is irrelevant to the written words. Please contemplate on it. A lot of things are related to the written words, but the ultimate truth are not. It's not. Who is the greatest? One who has united with the way is the greatest. As long as you comprehend the ultimate truth and the key teaching, then you're the greatest one. Then you would ascend to the highest Dharma throne. Uh, there's this joke, there's a blind person and a dwarf and a hunchback. And these three people are fighting for the highest seat. And each one of them has to say a statement and from there they would judge who has the best statement. And the blind person said, I don't see I don't see eye to eye with anyone. So and which means he is very superior to everyone because he's blind. And the dwarf that I can compare to the long ones, so long is like tall. So, therefore, the dwarf is the highest one, the tallest one. And the hunchback, you are my juniors. Because of the similar sound in Chinese. <laughs> this is a play of Chinese words. Uh, it may not mean anything in English. It's just a joke. Actually, the highest one here is the six patria. One does not necessarily have to have read the Mahaparinirvana Sutra, but he comprehended the profound meaning of the Sutra. He has gained enlightenment and seen the Buddha nature. So, although he is illiterate and he doesn't read the Sutra, he still had realization because the fifth patriarch pointed to him and immediately he understood. So that's 
the key point here. So the sixth patriarch doesn't eat for free because he gave teachings on the Buddhist concepts, like explaining this to the nun. And there's another joke. Someone, when drinking at another person's house, and he drank continuously late into the night, and the host wanted him to leave, but he did not. And they took a look outside, and it, there was dark cloud outside, and told the visitor, it's about to rain. And the visitor said, oh, that's even better. I, I cannot go in the rain. And he stayed and drank. And then the hostess said, oh, the dark cloud ha had gone. But it's late in the night, and it will not rain anymore. And then the visitor said, oh, that's good, then it, that it will not rain, then there's nothing to worry about, and he kept on drinking. The meaning of telling this joke is that the sixth patriarch doesn't eat and drink for free. He gives teachings to the Buddhist nun Wu Jin Tang. He explained the profound meaning of the Mahapadi Nirvana Sutra. So Wu Jin Tang was amazed. And she told the villagers, and he, she regarded that the sixth patriarch was one who had attained the way, and we should make offerings to him. So, like for Grandmaster, why do you make offerings to Grandmaster Lu, the lineage root guru? Because Grandmaster comprehends the profound meaning. The key point. So it's not free lunch. So like if I stayed at your home and you make offerings of all daily necessities, I have to return, I have to give something back to you. And what I give to you is the ultimate truths of the Buddha. And, and that's the that's the key Buddhist teaching. So the this key Buddhist teaching are irrelevant to the written words. So in the future, when you write a memo on enlightenment, you cannot write this. Irrelevant to the written words. Irrelevant to the words, of course. That's not wrong. Because the Buddha said, he gave teachings for 49 years, and yet he had not spoken even a word. That's what the Buddha said. That meant irrelevance to the words. So the sixth patriarch was also talking about it. So when you shoot the arrow, you cannot write irrelevance to the words. Of course, that's right. You should contemplate on the deeper meaning behind this. If the ordained Sangha can write the deeper or deepest meaning behind this statement, irrelevance to the words, if you can write that, then you will be a Vajra Acharya Master. <laughs>